There's a saying, if you aim for the stars, at a minimum, you'll hit the moon. Over seven years ago, we started a journey that included five years of research, one year of design, and now two years of construction, and we are so close to the finish line. I'm an aerospace engineer by degree, a former engineer with the Air Force, and now I work full time as a program manager for an aerospace company. My wife has a passion for helping people through food and a heart overflowing with compassion for others. Together we are working towards accomplishing our mission to design and operate a system that will provide sustainable food and energy to local communities around the world. Not some crazy ridiculously expensive scam based system, but an affordable, proven system that everyday people could afford. You might ask, why are we doing this? Well, two reasons, really. First, as a species, our population continues to grow. Now, regardless of your political stance, this is just a biological fact. It's growing exponentially. And by the year 2050, there will be 9.5 billion people on the planet. Now, that's enough people that if you were to stack them head to toe on their average size people, they could go from the surface of the Earth to the moon 42 times. Did you know that it took Neil Armstrong three days traveling at 25,020 miles per hour to get there? In order to support this many people, our global agricultural output has to increase by 70%, and the best we can do is 20%. Second, in addition to our population growth, as it grows, it's becoming more and more thirsty for fresh water. Recent studies conducted by NASA show that fresh water reserves across the planet are emptying faster than they can refill. It's only a matter of time before we have to make some serious changes. I'm the chief engineer of what we call Habitat One, or HAB One for short. HAB One is our first prototype and it's come a long way since we first started building in 2016. 2017 was in a cakewalk for us. In fact, it's taken a real toll physically, mentally, and on our relationships with friends and family. HAB1 is designed to provide sustainable food and energy to four families of four and is the first of three planned prototypes. It's far from perfect, and in the end, I'm pretty sure we are going to be a little bit short of some of our requirements, but it's a darn good start. We started big because lots of the smaller pieces we will need don't exist and we aren't trying to simply cobble together a system but trying to develop a real product. By going big we were able to acquire a majority of all the parts we needed off the shelf. And just like an electrical engineer who would breadboard their circuits before printing them, we are breadboarding the system before we spend serious money to custom build smaller, more affordable, easily mass producible, high quality and reliable parts. After HAB1, each HAB is intended to get smaller and smaller until we can fit the entire system into a shipping container. As the engineer, when I thought about how to design this system to help us on Earth, it occurred to me that thinking about a system like this operating on Mars would only help me design a better system for use here on Earth. And honestly, I've always wanted to be an astronaut and go to Mars. Combine that thought with an awesome neighbor who got us started on YouTube when he said I was, quote, like the real Martian from the movie The Martian, and you have the birth of this YouTube channel. And while it's fun to think about how this system could operate on Mars, and oh yes, it could, Elon, if you are watching this, we still want to talk. So even though it could work on Mars, the real goals are here on Earth, and those goals are to increase the agricultural output of one square foot of area by at least 50%, threshold up to 70% is our objective. That's our real goal. Two, to be self-contained, only using external resources including air, water, wind, and sun to operate. Three, generate no waste that must be disposed. It is meaning that this system can take in waste from external sources and be even waste negative. Four, it generates enough power, electricity, and fuel to run itself and support a family of four where excess can be sold. Five, it doesn't use pesticides, herbicides, or non-organic chemical fertilizers.
6. It utilizes 50% threshold, 90% objective, less water than traditional agriculture. 7. To be carbon neutral, threshold, or negative objective. 8. Be able to utilize traditional and non-traditional agricultural spaces in all human inhabitable environments. And finally, 9. Be scalable so that at a minimum a family of four can receive their food and power from this system. HAP1 generates energy through a combination of solar power and energy generated from bacteria in our anaerobic digester. This means that our system can provide power even when the sun isn't out and the wind isn't blowing. Food is developed from a symbiotic relationship between rainbow trout and the plants we grow aquaponically. And the system is managed by a cloud-based infrastructure that we have developed to give the operators real-time status and control of the system. One of our goals is to ultimately build the hardware and software needed so that any family could operate their own system from any place on the planet using their smartphones or other internet connected device. Last year was our first full year on YouTube and boy did we have some fun. With the help of our subscribers whom we call Mission Control, we have surpassed 20,000 strong and growing. Mission Control is a great term for all of our extended team in YouTube land as they really are part of this journey with us. They have provided invaluable help and suggestions through the comments in our videos as well as through their continued support on Patreon. This year, well, this year we believe, quite frankly, it's going to be amazing. All of the large system builds are completed and we are down to some final projects that we need to finish before the system is fully operational. This winter, we're going to try to get some bottoms up watering put in place for the microgreens to reduce mold and mildew and uh, fungus problems. We're going to decide on installing the moving insulation to help reduce, further reduce heating costs. We're going to get the aquaponics system initially operational or IOC on lanes one through four. That means beds one and two are all going to be operational on each of the four lanes. We're going to try to get the automation finished, at least the first draft, the first round of it finished, and do a sensor update. And we're also hoping to get the first mobile and web app put together. Come spring, we're going to fence off the area around the HAB so that we can let the animals back out into the pasture. This will help keep everything safe. We need to make further improvements and expand the aquaponics so that uh, bed three is included on each lane. We need to address how we're going to cool the building. We got that awesome new cover uh, and it does really great, it was, but in the summertime it's going to be really hot so we'll need a shade cover and some form of probably air conditioning. And finally in spring we're going to develop the plan of attack for the digester loading problem. Come summer we need to get the digester fully operational. That is the last major component of the system. I am so excited to get to it. We need to finish the aquaponics. You know, when we're done, we want it to be like a Garden of Eden in there when you walk in. It's going to be pretty tough, but I think we can do it. We're going to start defining the products that we think we can sell. You know, there's a lot of stuff we learned here, and we'd like to put some parts together and design reliable, quality product that we can sell to others so that they don't have to go through what we went through. And finally, in summer, we'd like to replace the non-organic trout feed with a sustainable solution, such as growing algae that then can be eaten by little red minnows and then feeding the minnows to rainbow trout, or maybe vermicomposting or something else like that. This fall, once we make it here, we're pretty much done. And now it's time to actually document all of our lessons learned from these early phases of development. And then uh, we also need to learn how to get the trout to breed. And hopefully, if all goes well, in winter of 2018-2019, we will be able to document uh, the HAB1 design and actually write all the uh, operator manuals for it, the maintenance manuals for it, uh, so that uh, we can make sure we know how to use it and other people could uh, be taught how to use it. And we're going to start the next big step, which is the HAB2 design. Whew, that's a lot, but it's nowhere close to what we went through in 2016 or 2017. Heck, maybe we might even get a vacation this year. Who knows? At least, well, we know. We're planning on it. <laughs> we need one. 
So having a bunch of parts that work together is cool, and that's basically what we have right now, but it doesn't do any good if they don't produce what we need. So this year, we're going to introduce something new, the Martian Challenge. Now we can't give you all the details yet, but here's the idea. Twice this year, Mrs. Martian and I will live off of what Habitat One produces for three days. So that's six days total. That's right, three days of eating nothing except what the system has to offer. And if it doesn't have, then we don't eat. I guess I could use a nice little diet, there's no doubt about that, but I'm thinking this might give us some serious motivation. We're really excited for what's coming in 2018, and honestly, the end is in sight for this first HAB. We're really looking forward to sharing this year of our journey with all of you, and want to say thank you up front for your continued support on YouTube and on Patreon. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Don't forget that you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. In the meantime, everyone, this is The Real Martian, out.